Hello, everyone, and welcome to... Come on. There we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nanoids of Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, and we have a old replay request from about a month ago. So, yeah, this is on 1.6.7.3, so if we see tanks, there will be some overpowered Cyclopses. But it looks like right now they're not going to be going for tanks. Both players look like they went for jump bots, so we won't see that. We're probably fine then. I guess it won't really matter which version of this is. Let's get going! So yeah, jump bot for Kiratul, jump bot for Green Squig, and Green Squig starting in a really odd spot as well. I mean, where Kiratul is starting, that's kind of normal. Generally speaking, people will usually start in the center because it's easy to access all the resource positions, but Kiratul is starting out in... Well, sorry, Kiratul is normal. Green Squig is starting out in the southeast, and that's defensible, but not that defensible. Like, it's... So the thing is, when people start defensively on this map, they usually start in the northern side because it's a bit easier to get to the center and a bit easier to cut off the choke point right here. And while you do have to worry about people coming down the hill, you still have four metal extractor points that you can use without having to worry about anything. But Green Squig, they have two. I have a third one that's a bit harder to defend, but that's about it. They can move on from there to the southern expansion, which is usually where people end up going in the eastern side of the map, but it's still a lot harder to defend from here, especially if they wanted to go over to the northeast. They pretty much ceded that to Caratool. So at this point, Caratool is running a bit of an advantage. Overall, though, economically, it's more that Caratool has been a bit more efficient with constructing wind generators, but it's not really otherwise a big of a deal. One thing to point out, though, is that Green Squig doesn't have as good a low power range. Now this map, it's not great for wind power in general. It's okay, but it's not great. It's, you know, 0.4 is about the best you can expect. There's a few sections of 0 0.5. 0 0.4 is, I would say, on the limit of what's reasonable for just a wind generator farm on its own. And that's a low limit. Actually, you get 0 0.6, 0 0.7. 0 0.7 is the point where it's a good idea just to focus on wind generators and maybe have a few solars for safety. Anything above one, always go for wind generators. But 0 0.4, 0 0.5, that is on the cusp of what I'd say is reasonable for having wind farms dominate, or at least even form a reasonably large part of your energy economy. But both players going for wind farms, so mostly the problem is going to be that, well, Caratool does have a couple backup solar plants, and that Green Squig is on the low ground. But they have corrected this, so... Yeah, they are getting solar plants. They know, they know enough of what's up. But the main thing, of course, is the fact that as the game progresses, Green Squig is going to have a hard time establishing their presence. That being said, Caratool hasn't really expanded all that quickly. Green Squig seems to be moving a little bit faster. They've gotten the third metal extractor surprisingly fast, considering that Caratool's just right there is already defended. But now it looks like Green Squig has managed to get in enough harassment, or at the very least, to distract enough from Caratool, but Caratool, on the other hand, also appears to be going for more of an aggressive strategy, getting the early moderators out on top of the pyros they've been using to rush, but not really going for a whole lot of economy. So despite Green Squig's opening position, they're actually starting out fairly strong. Caratool, on the other hand, expanded to the very area Green Squig has already gotten on their end, and that's kind of what I mean. At this point, you know, one or two Lotuses up here, or Stardusts up here, and that's going to be it. Like, Caratool's gonna have a very easy time maintaining easily five metal extractors pretty easily six but like i said they are not going for it very quickly which i find bizarre also green squig going for the puppies not not a terrible move considering the moderators like enough puppies will counter a moderator because the moderator has such a low rate of fire the problem is the support pyro if Green Squig went for a moderator of their own to get rid of that pyro, then they'd have an easy chance of getting in to deal with the other moderator. But right now, they're trying to overwhelm with puppies, and with the right positioning, they should be able to get to the moderator before the pyro saves it. And then indeed, that is exactly what's going to happen. These puppies able to get to the moderator right behind the pyro. Nicely done. Now all that's needed is for Caratool to, I mean, for Green Squig to find something to deal with the pyro directly, which puppies can kind of do the trick. But I would recommend getting a moderator. And that's exactly what they are doing. Getting that moderator, getting themselves into a reasonably good position, and right now, Green Squig, they are gradually pulling ahead. Caratool playing a bit of a longer game, though, trying to secure the center, get a firebase out there, get their commander out there to really establish presence, and then build up the metal extractors in the center. If Caratool manages to pull this off, they should be able to take this entire quarter of the map, and that alone, like, that's already going to add about 16 metal per second to them. Without too much trouble, either, because, again, Green Squig's in the southeast of the map, their factories and everything... They're all folks there. Their commander hasn't moved out at all. 
so they have no presence over to the northeast. So Caratul could potentially leverage getting the center into getting the entire northeast section, and that would leave Greensquig really in the dust. However, Greensquig's main advantage right now is that they have gone through for their economy faster, and they also managed to at least put some pressure in the center. They have a position where they can now get more damage in the center, but again, they'll need more moderators to do it with, sorry, more puppies to do it with, and Caratul's commander not really going to cause problems for that. The problem, of course, is that the puppies need to actually be able to get to the moderators. And enough of them. And that's not happening right now. That's not even the focus. Right now, Greensquig's focus seems to be trying to just expand normally. I'm not sure how much they realized before seeing the center that Caratool had expanded over there. I mean, if we check what Greensquig has for knowledge... They have one radar on their main base, but not enough to cover the center. Greensquig, on the other hand, they have pretty complete knowledge of everything outside of Green of Greensquig's main base. Caratool is... Only really blind down here. So that's the thing to bear in mind. Caratool knows exactly what's going on and is really setting up the main center area to just be as impenetrable as possible. And, oops. And there's not much that Green Squig is doing to counter that. I mean, if you look at what Green Squig's got going, okay, they got a couple jacks. That's good. The problem is the placeholder. The placeholder is going to stop those jacks, and at that point, there's not going to be much that they can do. A larger group of moderators would almost make sense. I mean, it's a little hard now because Caratool has gotten caught up in economy and Green Squig has invested most of their money into jacks. But, if they were to invest more of the money into, into placeholders, sorry, into moderators and placeholders possibly as well, build some more metal extractors, especially this three metal extractor. I don't know if Green Squig realizes that the metal extractor here is more valuable than the ones off to the side. I mean, they might no, and they might just not be going for it for the same reason they didn't go for the one up in the front of their base until later on in the game because they figure they can't easily defend it. But, yeah, that's worth a lot. And at this point, Caratool is only even close to even, actually. Green Squig's managed to get forward again, mainly thanks to a little bit of Northeast expansion. His Green Squig commander did manage to take the Northeast. There we go. Okay, Green Squig's got a reasonably strong position on the eastern side of the map. That is what they needed. Bit of a challenge to maintain, again, because their factory is so far away. But if their commander is able to stay alive, they should be able to hold on to this northeast section. And that's giving them an economic advantage. That can be leveraged into just building more moderators. But then again, with enough jacks, the placeholders won't be as big of a deal. Especially if puppies or other small units can distract the placeholders and care tools side. Then it should be fine. So the one thing to bear in mind, though, is that... At this point, Caratools does have a stronger army over in the center of the map. They've invested a lot more money into that army, into that defense... Green Squig has invested more into the expansion and a little bit more into, well, mostly into getting their jacks up, which, again, not a terrible idea. Using it more for direct assault rather than using it to try to get rid of the center, which is a bit of a ballsy move. I don't disagree entirely with it, it's just that it's going to be a bit difficult for them to hold the center, seeing as most of their economy has been invested into units that are not being used in this fight right now. On the other hand, the jacks coming in from Caratool... Just distracting the pirates completely, allowing the rest of the units on Caratool's side to rip apart all of Green Squig's army that's used to attack. And the Jacks look like they're prepared to go into Caratool's base, attacking from behind. And really, if they're going to do that, do that now. Like, don't wait. Go immediately, if not sooner. Like, I, I don't know what Green Squig is waiting for. I think they might just be getting a little overwhelmed with how much stuff they have to maintain. They're focusing mostly on their commander, not really focusing as much on what else is going on. Now they finally got a bit more focus back on here, but... Still, the Jacks over in the south of the map, they should have attacked a long time ago. And that, to me, is a problem. Especially as, like I said, Caratool is just getting more and more powerful units, more and more Jacks, more and more Firewalkers. And Greenswick hasn't really done a whole lot to deal with that. I mean, Caratool, at least, their commander is going to be under some damage. Greenswick at least has managed to deal with that somewhat, but, of course, Jack coming in here from Caratool, able to just completely eliminate that. And again, still distract from the Jackson Green Squig. Green Squig attacked with those Jacks two minutes ago. They would have gone through, avoided the starters completely, gotten rid of the moderator, sorry, gotten rid of the constable, gotten rid of all the metal extractors, and Green Squig would be in a great position to take this match. But as it is now, Green Squig is accessing as is Caratool, though Caratool is accessing yeah, about as much, actually. But Caratool just has a stronger army. They've been much more efficient with attrition, they've been much more efficient in terms of unit choices. And they have center, center control. Now, granted, Green Squig went and took care of the Northeast to make sure that they didn't lose that. But still, Caratool has an easier factor path to get there. 
They have a fire base in the center of the map they can use to set up a unit, set up an assault before pushing it in the northeast. And again, Green Squig can't easily defend it. And even their attacks are somewhat limited, and they're not really going for them. I'm honestly not sure where Green Squig is planning to actually push in to break Caratua's hold, but at this point, I'm not sure there, what there is. There are no easy answers right now. Everywhere Caratool has placed themselves, they've placed enough defenses that Green Squig is going to have to invest quite a bit of money, quite a bit of metal, quite a bit of units to actually take it down. There are a few weak points, though. This Lotus being a really good example, actually. And that is one spot where that's broken. There is a bit of a path going through here, like going through the little path leading directly into the east side of Caratool's main base that would allow for an entrance. But no, going instead for the center. I mean, granted, the Jack should be able to get through the Stardust and take them down pretty easily, but even then, it's just the amount of damage being dealt here, the amount of lopsidedness between the forces, I mean, Caratool's just going to manage to win without losing anything. Valiant effort trying to get rid of the Stardust like that, but unfortunately not really the best option. Honestly, the Moderators would have been a better approach. They outrange the Stardust massively. I can kind of see the logic for the Jack, though. I mean, their point is to get in and break defenses and just generally tank everything, but they don't deal a massive amount of damage. They deal quite a bit of damage, yes, 300 damage a shot, but it's still not much compared to the Moderators dealing 500 damage okay, every 10 seconds, but you get enough of them, and they're at range. You're not risking them as much. They don't deal as much damage per second, but boy, do they ever deal massive chunks of burst damage, and that's what you need when you're dealing with a repair... A, when you're dealing with a firebase that has a caretaker that is automatically repairing everything. Like, as it stands, the Jacks did nothing. Literally, less than nothing. They gave Caratool some reclaim. And Caratool's already got their caretakers up. They, they've set themselves up. If it weren't for the fact that they stopped building units, Caratool would be great as far as not accessing, whereas Green Squig... They're letting their money burn. Like, they are not using it as well as they could, and that's going to be their undoing. Caratool, at this point, has an economic advantage. They have a production advantage. They've got everything going for them. The one thing that I'd say Green Squig might have if they have knowledge of it, and they don't really, would be that Caratool is quite spread out. Like, Green Squig could theoretically go through the north, take care of the Firewalker, go around the side. This entire area here is completely undefended. It's just that that's... For one thing, getting through the Firewalker is kind of hard when dealing with a bunch of slow units like Moderators and Placeholders, so good luck with that. And also, they... Caratool hasn't really made it obvious that they're vulnerable here, and Green Squig isn't going in. So yeah, Caratool managed to take the entire Northeast, as I mentioned, or sorry, Northwest, as I mentioned earlier, they could pretty well move into the Northeast if they wanted to, and regardless, they have a massive economic advantage, and Green Squig has never taken the plus three metal extractor over in the center. They must have been too, I'm guessing they didn't think they'd be able to, they must have thought, okay, it's too dangerous, it's too, it's not worth the cost, it's like, no, it's always worth the cost, it would have been alive for at least 20 seconds, it would have been worth the cost for plus three. But no, and again, Green Squig hasn't built any more caretakers or used any additional place or any additional care, any additional constables to help deal with the factory, help deal with spending the metal on units. So it doesn't really matter, but that's for a larger problem reason. Like it doesn't matter because Green Squig was not spending their money. So at this point, Caratool is essentially just cleaning up, unless there's something I'm not, I, there's nothing I'm really not seeing. There is a Scorpion being built up by Green Squig, which is one of the reasons they haven't been accessing. But even then, they've just lost a couple metal extractors. They've lost four metal per second worth of metal extractors. They've lost the ability to take that plus three as well. They've still lost the one in the north and haven't rebuilt it either. As I mentioned before, difference between a good player and a great player, great players rebuild everything as quickly as possible. Like, no, you don't let metal extractors remain idle, and so Green Squig... I mean, that would help quite a bit, because they're currently putting in about 7, uh, 10 metal per second into here, depending on the priorities. No, 7, let's see, 7, 6, okay, 15 metal per second into this scorpion. It's kind of split evenly between the two. But still, that's, I mean, considering you, that's 15 metal per second, you could, if you added in these three metal extractors, that's another 6 metal per second, split evenly, that's still, like, you're, that's still a boost of about, a, about 25% in terms of build time. And, as I mentioned already, one of the things that Green Squig had a bit of a hard time with earlier was being decisive about attacking, which, in this case, allowed Caratool to take this entire southwest base. 
And the longer that Green Squig waits, the more Caratua will have fortified, and the harder it'll be for the Scorpion to find any value. So honestly, I'm not really sure what Green Squig is thinking by not rebuilding stuff, but again, I think it's just that they haven't really thought about it. They are getting some reclaim, which is good, but the question is, are they going to rebuild afterwards? Hey, my, my point is basically that it's very important to keep as much as you can in terms of money. Like keep as many sources of income available as possible. Even if it seems like you're not going to, just the time savings you get is still important. But the Scorpion is up, so just needs to be used now, basically. Find somewhere to move in with it, move, use it now. I mean, this area right here, if it can get close to the moderators and stun them all... Oh, no, they mean some fire follow-up forces. This is still the problem, though. It's like, where is it going to find that? I mean, okay, the puppies might be able to get in, deal with the monitors a bit from a flank, actually. That wouldn't be a bad idea, but the firewalkers would stop them. If the scorpion could deal with the firewalkers and then have puppies deal with the moderators, there's an outside chance that this entire attack force will be destroyed and Caratool might be able to... or uh, Green Squig might be able to break through some of Caratool's forces. But still, there is the problem that remains that the factory is not building stuff, and unless the Strider starts building something else, which... Okay, getting a Merlin up. Probably a better idea than the Scorpion, honestly. Still, Green Squid could really use a bit more build power in their factory. And by a bit, I mean a lot. At this point, Green Squid has knowledge of stuff. Doesn't really know what the stuff is. Hopefully the Scorpion doesn't get decloaked before it figures out what to do. Ah, it's right next to the Firewalkers. Perfect. Stun at the Firewalkers. That was exactly the target it needed to do. Firewalkers right out of the way. That is amazing. Where are the puppies? Ah, not even being used. Yeah, the Scorpion, unfortunately, is going to have a bit of a hard time now, thanks to, well, everything being <laughs> slowing down, all the moderators everywhere around. But that was a great setup. Unfortunately, no follow-up, but still, got rid of the Firewalkers. At, at any rate, that is a huge blow, but not for the cost of a Scorpion. Again, I do really wish that those puppies had been around with the Scorpion. I mean, granted, they didn't know the Firewalkers were there, but, like, if your Scorpion's there... Your Scorpion's not going to be able to deal with anything on their own. I don't know if Green Squig realized that. I mean, they're not a totally new player. They have clearly gotten some games in, gotten some wins in. But they might still be overestimating Striders. It's not hard to do. They're intimidating units. They're expensive units. They're endgame units. You might think, oh yeah, I got a Strider. I win. Well, no. You get a Strider, you get a nice concentrated burst of power in one section of the map. You don't necessarily win. In that particular case, though, you do get a lot of, of disabling power in one spot, which is really nice. Like, that was the thing that that allowed them to get rid of all the Firewalkers. Ah, okay, good. They're using the puppy to reclaim, although, unfortunately, not close enough to actually get the reclaim. Right idea, but the execution's a little bit off. The range, I think it's the blue circle, and it's a little bit out of the way, but thankfully, they're keeping track of that. Thankfully, Green Squig's realized what's going on. But, oh, oh, that's nice. Oh, the Scorpion's going to become a lot of puppies if they don't all die to the moderators that they just did because the moderators are still walking through. Like I said, this is that's more a question really of tactics. Getting all your units in the right position at the right time is very important and wasn't done here. And, yeah, we're going to see people in the YouTube comments. They're going to be going on about how Green Squig really should have built more radar. And, yeah. Yeah, they really should have. They had some knowledge of what's going on here, but this hill... I don't know why they didn't build radar just up this hill. Like, seriously. Radar right here, I think... Can I get the range? Yeah. So there's a little bit of a terrain block, but it covers so much. Like, you can see the green circle already. And the terrain's not going to block most of that. That would allow for knowledge of where all the forces are. Not of what they are, but still where they are. So it's something. But... Green Squig has no idea where character wolves even put them after that fight. I don't know what they are at this point because it, they've been seen. But it doesn't even matter. Not, It's not going to matter at least unless it is something that gets dealt with. And then, like, they actually get, the radar gets built and I don't think that's going to happen. Most of the money is being wasted trying to get rid of the Juggernaut here, which is not happening. Valiant up from a couple of these jacks trying to get rid of the Juggernaut and unfortunately they're just outnumbered. They're not really going to be able to get through it. Nice try, but... No, nah, between the gravity beams and the placeholders... Jacks weren't a bad idea, it's just... Between the gravity beams and the placeholders and all the other jacks and moderators from their opponent, it's just not enough. 
again, Caratul, they've kept an, a larger army. They've kept an army advantage this entire game, and largely because of the fact that they've been able to maintain good attrition. I mean, obviously in the last five minutes or so, it's because they've had a massive economic advantage. But throughout the entire game, they've kept their attrition far more efficient than Green Squig. And this is where I was talking about as far as Green Squig being able to defend. Their factory's down here. They've lost the Northeast. There's no easy way they're taking that back. And there's also no easy way they can get something to support the str these Striders here. I mean, the Merlin's almost done. It'll start firing off a volley. There's already an Aegis here. That's going to block off the volley. Or at least some of the volley. And then it'll, it'll communicate that, hey, a bunch of money has just been poured into a single unit again. So, that's the thing, is that Greenswig's basically making it obvious that they don't have an army right now. They have two units and a Merlin. And that's it. They're not going to be able to get any real value out of that. I mean, okay, thankfully for it, they managed to get some hits in outside of the shields, but still. That still communicated that Greensquig is very vulnerable. They're behind an economy, and they're not spending money in ways that allowed them to harass around their opponents and take out what their opponents have for economy to at least try to even out the playing field before building a giant unit. They're going for the giant unit, and the giant unit isn't really doing much for them, except telling their opponents that they have a single giant unit, and that's it, and nothing else. But I can't really fault their targeting priorities. Well, at any rate, that was that, so... Yeah, Green Squig taking the hit. Going down. I would say, I think... I can't remember. I think it was actually them that requested this. Which is why I've been kind of harping on, more on them than on Cartool, because pretty sure they actually asked, like, hey, what did I do wrong here? Sorry it took me a month to get to it, if you're still watching. But the the key thing, two key things, were creating a base in the southeast compared to the middle on this map is difficult to defend things within the late game. But I'd say the most pressing issue, which ties into the base placement, but also ties into some of the issues that came up in the mid-game with Jacks not attacking when they could have, and with not taking expansions when they were available. This game is not one for playing timidly. It is possible to play a defense-heavy strategy on some maps where you're kind of building out from a somewhat concentrated area that they didn't burst out of. But I've seen that work like once or twice. I have a re I have an old video from a couple years ago, a cast I did of a match that did that. It's actually in the Masterclass playlist. But that's a very hard strategy to pull off and not one I'd recommend. In general, fortune favors the bold. Like, build forward metal extractors. Attack if you have a unit or two going around. And if you're seeing your opponent is attacking some point in the map, or trying to build up some point in the map, attack there as early as you can, as early as, early as you can plausibly deal with it. And that's where it's important to know what units deal with other units, how the properties interact. Like the fact that puppies do really well against mod raiders, because mod raiders only have one shot every 10 seconds. So as long as you get more puppies, two puppies kill a mod raider, you just need as many mod raiders as puppies times three. Which is really easy to do, because mod raiders are expensive. They're 240 metal, and puppies... I think like 40 metal each, and on top of that, 50 metal each, and on top of that, they can build off reclaim. So, you can pretty easily outnumber moderators for the value. And get a bunch of hits in, and get all, rid of all the moderators with puppies. It's like Stuff like that is important, but mainly it's just being forward, attacking where you can, trying to find room, and building more radar. That was the other thing. Like, get the information... Be bold. Don't like, take expansions when you can. Take bases that allow you to defend as much as possible in the late game. It might make the early game a little bit harder to have a more forward base, but it makes the late game a lot easier. That's why in this map people generally start in the center. And also, if you're in a position where you're kind of behind in terms of economy or kind of behind in terms of unit count, don't go for striders. Typically, there's situations where that can work if you have a follow-up force that allows you to really take advantage of that and provide all the value in the world to the Strider. But it's hard to do, and I would not necessarily recommend it. Anyway, that's that. So next match is going to be, or next replay rather, is going to be a match between Sparkles and Bum Crumbs on Obsidian. This is on the current version of the game. The map we, match we just watched, again, it's on 1.6.7.3. 
This should be the last replay I actually do of that match. Or that that version, because... I mean, that version was around for a while, and I had some old re requests I wanted to get through, but that's done. Now we're on to slightly less old requests. So yeah, Sparkles and Bump Crumbs on Obsidian. This is another request, of course. I believe from Bump Crumbs. They seem to like my advice. So yeah, I'll be giving it to them in a couple minutes. Stay tuned. Oh, crap. I didn't even have to... Sorry, guys. Not tournament. I... <sighs> my bad. What day is it today? October 6th? Yeah, I think... Whatever, I'll have it corrected for the next one. Sorry, everyone watching. It's This is not a tournament. But I guess people on YouTube would know from the title. Alright, be back in a sec. 